Huddersfield in November. Balbir Singh and residents of the Spring Grove area prepare to celebrate bonfire night. They live in a courtyard of old decaying houses. It seems there's plenty to burn. Just put it to be simpler. An ancient British ritual being honoured with enthusiasm by some very modern citizens, coloured Englishmen. Hey, well, we are... now, Guy Fawkes, they were usually... Guy Fawkes uh, blew the parliament in 19... No, I mean 1605. They blew the parliament on 1605. They tried to blow the parliament up, but they didn't succeed. There were about yeah. three men. But two of them escaped. The Guy Fawkes was the, the one who was going to light the gunpowder, but, but he got caught. He had uh, wood stacked up and all that. They tried to uh, get Guy Fawkes to tell him who's the other men, but, but Guy Fawkes wouldn't speak. Why was Tell Guy Fawkes trying to blow the parliament up, do you know? Um, because uh, because uh, there was a special meeting going up. I don't know what about, what it was. I just learned the 1605 today, in, uh, in history today. Mm, in history. Guy Fawkes Night is an early introduction to parliamentary ideals. But how do Westminster and British institutions filter through here? I've just got one for me. Hey, don't burn me. A community relations concert, Huddersfield parading its integrated past. The town has had four other recent migrations, Poles, Hungarians, Irish, and these Ukrainians, daughters of migrant workers from Eastern Europe who, despite their jaw-breaking names, are culturally absorbed, integrated Yorkshire lasses. Government policy is to foster good relations. The Community Relations Committee in the town organized the concert. It is the close arm of government. By displays of civic harmony like this, the City Fathers give an official lead to Huddersfield citizens. I believe, you know, ladies and gentlemen, that this concert is a fine example of the way in which the various communities who live in our town can work and play happily together with complete friendship. Following in the steps of the East Europeans have come West Indians and Asians. 6,000 West Indians in all have brought their families and their English culture from the Caribbean. The song is a plaintive tale of poverty among peasants in Jamaica. Today, England has become the place to make the money they can't make at home. These are the municipal strivings for better relations. Monday to Friday, immigrants live a real life outside. Huddersfield also has 6,000 Asians, the eddies of a once fast-flowing tide. The immigrants, now 9% of Huddersfield's total population, are heavily concentrated in this old inner area of the town. A mile away, where the coloured area peters out, the white population looks on with a wild surmise. This area now uh, is mostly immigrant. Uh, one might say, if you're seen in this area, somebody might come up to you and say, Dr Livingston, I presume. <laughs> John Bramley, a tough-minded local estate agent, is also an exacting neighbour. Uh, they don't look after the houses here, as you will so able to be able to see. Well, I, you see, I don't see that altogether because it doesn't look too bad to me. You call this a slum, do you? Well, it's boarding on it because there are houses with bathrooms in. Uh, when they paint them, they only paint them with one coat of paint. Uh, they don't really look after these properties. I think eventually they will come down. The whole area will come down. They'll have to come down. 
The stiffest test of white attitudes comes when immigrants have the money to buy better houses. Will they then be allowed the same mobility as whites? This would appear to be the district where the immigrant, when he wishes to better himself, has come to live. Property values have fallen here. I think it's rather unfair because obviously these being two bedroomed houses, the immigrant is wishing to live as we live uh, and to be as we are. Uh, but are white people starting to move out of here too? They are to a certain extent, unfortunately, yes. Um, now why do they do that? I would not know, perhaps it's a question of give a dog a bad name and that the people who are coming, the immigrants who are coming here are suffering from the actions of their brethren in the areas we have just been to. I wouldn't know this, but I don't think they move out immediately. But I think they are up to sort of say, well, I think the man says to his wife, I think, dear, we look for something else in another area. But can you tell me what do these people object to? I mean, all the houses look the same to me. I, I, I couldn't tell if it It's very difficult, places. except perhaps the neighbour doesn't speak your language. You can't talk over the garden wall to Mrs. Brown. I think perhaps there may be the smell of the cooking again, which uh, is somewhat objectionable if they use the, if they're using uh, their native dishes. I can't smell any smell of cooking here. Can I you? quite agree with you. I quite agree. It, it is a little bit unfair and ununderstandable, but here they, the prices have not dropped as much as normal. But there's no inflationary trend. And I think people are glad to sell these houses at the price they gave for them something like five or six years ago. It's not just in the new suburbs that Mr. Bramley will wish them to conform, but down among the old back-to-backs as well. It seems amazing to me that a man should paint his brickwork like that and allow his downpipes to be broken and cracked. I would have thought his endeavours would have been a lot better uh, directed to mending his downpipe than painting his stonework. But if he wants to brighten it up, and God knows it could do with brightening up, couldn't it? I mean, why is that people object to him trying to brighten it up? I really? don't think they like the Yorkshireman is really taking to this uh, flamboyant colours of the blue and the red and the green and the yellow. Mm. And they do have this habit of painting the stonework. 